My name is Angela Izzo. I go by Izzo Images. I'm from Long Island, New York. I was raised by a Italian father and a mother who's Sicilian from the Bronx. I lived in New York most of my childhood. I started as a painter and a dancer. I got into photography when I moved to Florida. Uh, in high school, I got into black and white photography. I was pretty rebellious, so I took as many art classes as possible just to enjoy high school. And then eventually I moved out to California and attended Brooks Institute of Photography and majored in uh, photojournalism. My brand, Izzo Images, is obviously my last name. I came up with it in college. The professors wanted to know, like, you have to have a name for yourself. And everyone was doing their name with photography, like blah, blah, photography. And I'm just like, well, I don't, I don't only do photography. I do, I don't want to be like limited to just photography. So I came up with Izzo Images. And I also like it because it's, people don't know if I'm a guy or a girl. They just see Izzo as just a name. They don't refer to as a woman and they don't refer to as a man. So a lot of times people think I am a man. So it's kind of like this this mask, like this mystery mask. So when people finally meet me, they're like, this is Izzo. They're like, oh, that's you. But otherwise I could just like hide behind Angela. So, voila, Izzo. How about that, the Jay-Z song? Oh my God. Ah, I was tortured in high school when that song came out. So funny. A to the Izzo. So whenever I would walk in, even when I go to New Orleans. They would like play that song as soon as I walk into the bar. They're like, Izzo's here. And they like have that song play. So Jay-Z, big up, big up, brother. Just like, thanks. And there's Lizzo now. There's Lizzo. There's Izzo. And there's Lizzo Hova. Yeah. So what did you study at Brooks? I majored in photojournalism and visual arts. I got into like documentary filmmaking and news photography. Very unphotoshopped, everything had to be super real. And even when I started Brooks, the professor went around the class and asked all of us what we liked shooting. And I said, I love to shoot bands. And they're like, well, you're not allowed to shoot that for the rest of your time here. And I'm like, because I got into music photography and even being a photographer because I used to go to concerts because there wasn't much to do in Florida. So any kind of money I would get, I would go to a show. I would sneak in most of the time. I would charge my way all the way to the front. And then I would see in photographers in front of me. So I was like, I want that job. I want to do that. So that's kind of why I decided to be a photographer because I wanted to have access into other worlds other than my own. Some of my earliest work, I remember getting, I still call them muses, like my friend Senta was one of my first muses, and I would dress her up, and we would go to a location, and we would just photograph. That was kind of my first work, is black and white photography with a subject, dressing them up, and kind of just playing, just playing, being playful. How I got into the Ventura music scene. Moving to Ventura at the age of 19, I didn't know anyone or anything about that town. It took me a couple years to even get in with the locals. I made a friend, Lynn, who had the space called the Art Barn, and she would host parties and shows. So I kind of got involved with the locals coming in and playing. I would actually record my own music, and that's how I got my first music video that I did with this girl, Amelia, with crippled puppies, and we did our my first music video with her. And then I did a video for this guy, Seth Pedersen. Beautiful shot I did in his house in Camarillo. And then my friend Neil Casal saw that video and he contacted him to contact me to do a video for him. So getting involved with Neil got me involved with Chris Robinson, got me involved with like the San Francisco scene, Terrapin Crossroads, 
it kind of was like a big branch into a lot of folk artists and yeah it's been going ever since talk about the, the different venues that you were shooting at early years of ventura in ventura yeah um it was very it wasn't like your traditional venues when i started it was like at house parties at diy underground spaces at cafes up in ojai a lot it was cute it was nice it was sweet so talk about your early photography equipment oh my early gear was just like um when i started in high school it was just black and white film camera and i did dark room work just you know the standard black and white and did my I developed my own film and then when i went to brooks they kind of it was the time when digital was taking over, so I just had like a Canon, I think it was a 20D. It was like the best camera at the moment. So I never had a computer or a camera, like a digital camera, so I had to like learn all that stuff. <laughs> Anything else you want to add on the music scene? <laughs> With then and now? Sure. Well, the Ventura music scene was its own thing. It kind of had a moment and then kind of I don't know if it's as active anymore because I live in Los Angeles now and I photograph a lot of the folk artists, a lot of up and coming artists, a lot of pop stars, all kind of like famous people, not so famous people. And I just love being around music and being on stage and just having all access into worlds that people would love to be part of, I guess. Just being around music is great. And mention about how that also includes the music video stuff. Well, I got into music videos because I like movement, as I said before. So music videos is kind of like a way to bring a photograph to life, something about bringing an idea to life, like a music video. So when I started music photography, I was very guerrilla style. I would sneak my camera into a lot of shows. I would follow certain bands. I would photograph them. I would get the shots. I went with that for a while until I started meeting actual friends that are in bands. So I started going along with them, hitting the road. I've been documenting since I moved to Los Angeles the noise experimental underground music scene now. You kind of get bored of things, like how many times could I just like photograph a guy with a guitar or a girl like singing. So I discovered the scene of like modular synths and circuit bending and noise music. So I've been like doing that for the past five years, documenting that whole scene. Because it's super outside abstract performance art, like five people at the show. It's like super, they don't care about being famous. So there's something inspiring and like raw about like artists that are just doing it for the art as opposed to trying to be famous or cool or fit in so i think it's it's nice there's some cool stuff going on what do you think about los angeles i love la i love california you know at times you feel like what am i doing here but at other times you're like i'm so happy to be here um the thing that's cool about living in Los Angeles is you could kind of just get lost in a world you want to create for yourself. Like a lot of friends that move here, they end up just disappearing into their own experience because this is kind of what that city is made for. It's like, if you have a dream, you could have your own mission and you know, you could be in the art world, there's shows, you know, it's like the oceans right there. You could get to the desert really quick. There's the international airport, so it's like, it's a good, it's a big little city. You end up running into a lot of people that you know. So it kind of gets smaller and smaller, but, and also bigger. My favorite places to photograph, pretty much wherever I feel inspired, really. I love creating 
sort of fantasy out of the mundane. A lot of my work kind of looks very like, where did you shoot this? This looks really cool and it could be in someone's backyard. I love photographing in the desert, like in Joshua Tree. I love photographing like street photography, just walking through like a place that I've never been to, like travel photography. Like I just went to Mexico and was driving around on golf carts and I would just see like light hitting like the fabrics on the clotheslines and I was just like mesmerized. So it's like where I'm not used to seeing all the time is actually really inspiring because I'm like, oh cool, let me get that shot. So it all depends like, you know, pretty fluid. Talk about lamography, how that started. <laughs> well, I started with lamography, I believe it was like 2010. I at this time I was kind of getting bored with digital photography I you know you take a photo you see it you're like okay that's a good shot or it's a shitty shot so I was getting bored so I had a friend that was like oh there's this cool thing that called lamography and they're doing this tour at Mocha and we could they'll give us cameras and we'll take pictures so I traveled down to LA with her they gave us these cool little art film cameras they loaded it up and we like went to like the Banksy exhibit at the MoCA, I believe. I was just, it was amazing. I just like took pictures and I saw the film that came out. It was so like trippy and cool just by playing around. And I kind of just bought my own camera, like the Diana Mini, I loaded that up and I just was shooting. I've been shooting with her now for like almost 10 years. So I just got excited again about photographing film and now I'm sponsored by them. They send me film, they send me cameras, they have me experiment with stuff. So it's kind of like those like happy accidents that I'm really into, like kind of like the the structure mixed with whatever's gonna happen. Explain what lomography is to people who don't know. Lomography I think is like photography, but it's like Lomo, which is kind of like it's just like a lo-fi way of photographing. It's like most of my cameras are made of plastic with plastic lenses. It's like you can break them really easily. They're kind of quirky. They like load up different. Some film I shoot with is like purple or turquoise. So it's kind of like outside the box. We like to experiment with like sprocket holes and sun bleaching and just like all very lo-fi, weird, quirky, cheap, kind of cheap, but it's kind of is an expensive habit because, you know, developing and film, it's definitely like a labor of love. And, you know, it's like digital, you take the picture, it's there, but these kind of cameras, like people are like, oh, I wanna see how the picture turned out. I'm like, well, you can't see it. <laughs> so and a lot of times when I'm shooting, I'm like, well, I have a feeling it's gonna be great. <laughs> How about that technique you use where you double expose? How's that work? Oh, um, well, I, I've been shooting with the Diana Mini, which I should have had with me right now. My little baby that you'll see a lot of my pictures are really blended. I've kind of mastered that technique on my own. I don't really see anyone else really doing it. it um, that camera doesn't do that. I kind of made that myself just with the settings and I've been shooting with her for over 10 years, so um, it's just like multiple layering and like rewinding, rewinding, and a lot of my pictures are just one long stream. And a lot of people think I do Photoshop, and I uh, most of my work is not Photoshop at all. The color, the layering, the trippiness, like I try to do everything in camera using prisms, weird lighting film stock, layering, kind of just messing with my camera, kind of mildly destroying them. It's like it's like playing an instrument. I, I'm like using my equipment as an instrument. So I'm like playing with it. Talk about that, talk about that, that lens you use, that. The, the prisms? Yeah. Um, well, I get, like people send me prisms, like my friend with uh, Future Eyes, he sends me a bunch of prisms that I get to play with and I use them in music videos, I'll use them in photo shoots, I've used them at concerts, and then I've noticed other people, you know, been using prism techniques too, and I'm super happy about it. It's like, I'm not the one that invented it. It's been happening since the 60s, you know, with psychedelic. So I'm really into psychedelic. Maybe I've done too much acid in my life, I don't know, but I'm really into 
just really abstract psych even though my background is not psychedelic it's photojournalism so I kind of went like a completely different way with my work with experimenting abstract layers very unjournalistic but in a way it is journalistic that makes sense photographers that have influenced me it's not just photographers that have influenced me it's more of like artists like I remember being well I still am like inspired by like Salvatore Dali Man Ray I remember watching the Woodstock documentary when I would paint like in high school and I was really inspired by that like video photojournalism realness of just documenting people and the way it was edited um, like Annie Leibovitz, Cindy Sherman um, I really liked Peter Max at some points you know watching the Yellow Submarine you know all that hippie stuff like listening to records on vinyl you know it's like well records on vinyl it's like the same thing but listen to records in my room like The Doors and you know, Jimi Hendrix, all that old stuff. So I was just really in influenced by kind of that psych pop world. That's, yeah. And black and white, really high contrast. Talk about uh, boudoir. Boudoir. Well, I photograph a lot of women in lingerie, as some people have noticed. It's kind of like a new thing. My friend Claire Bear, who I made friends with when I moved to LA, she's an awesome lingerie designer. I, of course, I have friends in the music world, so a lot of my models are musicians in bands, like lead singers, so it's the same thing, like how many times can I photograph them playing a guitar? It's like, okay, I want to get them not on stage, I want to get them in lingerie somewhere else. So it's pretty much I've taken like the musician off the stage into underwear and kind of showing them in this more like like raw setting where they're a lot of times they would never pose like this but they'll do it for me because I'm just like hey you want to do this and they're like yes so and then other models have seen me photograph like this and I've gotten a lot of messages the same thing like not knowing that I'm a girl or a guy like wondering if I would do photos like this for them so I say yes of course and then they find out I'm a girl and they get really excited because they get to work with other females because, you know, women are very comfortable with each other. So that's why it's like Izzo images is cool because I'm kind of like non-sex, sexless? That doesn't make sense. I don't know if I fucked that up. Asexual. Asexual. But doesn't that mean like you're not into it or you have no, I don't know, fuck it, I don't I hope I sound okay. TMI. TMI, never mind. Let's get that out. Cut.